Hey, a friend, Chris here from WhiteLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Welcome to video number six in our ongoing series all about getting started with Atmos in Logic. In today's video, we are going to explore 3D object panning. So how 3D objects work in your Atmos projects, how to set up your individual tracks to take advantage of the 3D object panner, why you might choose 3D object panning as opposed to surround panning, as well as some other details along the way. Of course, before we dig in, we have to shout out our sponsor of this series, which is IK Multimedia. Now, IK was incredibly supportive of this series, and to help me out, they sent along on loan a set of their iLoud MTM Immersive Bundle speakers. And I've said it again and again with each video, I have fallen in love with this bundle, and I love working and listening on these speakers. So the iLoud MTM Immersive Bundle is a bundle of 11 of the very popular iLoud MTM speakers from IK. And I think this bundle is fantastic for anyone that wants to get into Atmos and immersive audio for a lot of reasons. Number one, I think this bundle is incredibly budget friendly for what you get in terms of speaker count, as well as the tech that's built into each speaker. Number two, these speakers sound fantastic. Number three, thanks to the fact that these speakers are small and they're light and you can thread them onto something as simple as a microphone stand, you can mount these speakers just about anywhere in your studio as I've done in my own studio. And number four, thanks to the built-in ARC technology, you can tune these speakers to your space. So what you're hearing from each speaker is something you know you can trust. I'll include a link in the description below, as well as in this video that will take you to IK's website if you want to learn more all about the iLoud MTM Immersive Bundle. All right, 3D object panning, the tool that will allow you to place your sounds and your tracks around the listener with pinpointed precision. Just a quick reminder, the headphones are required for listening to the audio examples in today's video as well as every other video that includes audio examples from the project that we see on screen. And that's because all the audio examples are being played through the Dolby binaural renderer from the Dolby Atmos plugin in Logic Pro. Again, the binaural renderers allow us to hear a multi-channel Atmos production in a virtualized space specifically for headphone playback so that we still get that sense of depth and space and height as you listen and work on your Atmos productions. So the audio examples in this series will not translate effectively on studio monitors or the built-in speakers on your Mac hardware or on anything other than a pair of headphones. All right, let's take a quick look at the mixer in this project. If we take a look around the mixer, you can see that most of my tracks are using the surround panner. As noted by the circular panner in each channel strip that includes the circular dots along the panner, that indicate to us different speaker positions in the surround setup that we can pan to. However, there are some select tracks and channel strips that are using 3D object panners, as noted by the square panner that indicates to us a room or space that we can pan within. Now you can convert any panner in your sessions to a 3D object panner just by right-clicking or holding control and click on a non-3D object panner. This brings up a dropdown from which we can choose 3D object panner. And check it out, I've now converted this guitar tracks panner from surround to a 3D object panner. Quick side note, if you ever need to revert a 3D object panner back to a surround panner, you can just go up to the output field of that channel strip, click, go down to output, and then select surround. And check it out, we've now reverted back to a surround panner for our guitar track. If we close the mixer, and if we zoom in on some of these tracks, we can also have access to panning with non-3D object panners as well as 3D object panners right within the track headers of our individual tracks. All right, so let's zoom out and let's hone in on this break lead right here towards the end of the song. I'm gonna use key command control and S to solo this track stack. I'll set the cycle range by using key command C. And for now, let's turn off any and all automation for the track stack so we can play around with the 3D object panning for the synth. Now, of course, we could begin panning the synth lead using the 3D object panner in both the track header and the channel strip just by clicking and dragging within the panner. So let's give it a try right now. However, I think it's a lot more fun and easier to work with the 3D object panner by double clicking on the panner, which brings up a 3D object panner window that provides much more detailed control over the panning of your 3D objects. If you remember from video number five, all your non-3D object panning tracks 
are part of what we call the surround bed. And the surround bed is just like a stereo audio file, but instead of being a single audio file made up of two channels, a left and right channel, it's a single audio file made up of 10 channels in total. Now, tracks and channel strips assigned a 3D object panner differ from the surround bed tracks in a number of different ways. First, taking a look at the 3D object panner, unlike a surround panner, we don't see individual speaker icons around the panner. Let's open a surround panner just so we can compare the two. So with the surround panner, we see these speaker icons that indicate to us different output channels that we can pan to. Whereas with a 3D object panner, we don't see any speaker icons. And that's because our 3D objects are channel independent as opposed to the tracks that make up the surround bed. In fact, tracks that are assigned a 3D object panner are treated completely separately from the surround bed as noted here in the Dolby Atmos plugin. And when you go to file, to export and export your Atmos project as an ADM BWF file to upload for distribution, your 3D objects are exported as separate individual files contained within this master file. Now there's a limit to how many object channels you can use in a single Atmos project, and we're limited to 118 object channels in total. 3D objects can be either mono or stereo. Each mono 3D object counts as a single object channel, whereas stereo 3D objects each count as two object channels. So as you can see in my list of 3D objects, I have eight stereo 3D objects. Each count as two object channels. So I'm using 16 object channels out of the available 118. One other detail that's incredibly important when it comes to 3D objects is that any track and channel strip assigned a 3D object panner goes straight to the Dolby Atmos plugin on the master channel strip, which means any routing or plugin processing that's in between that track and channel strip and the Dolby Atmos plugin will be skipped over. So let me quickly illustrate. Let's take a listen to this lead and I'm gonna open this channel EQ that I have loaded on the master channel strip. Here we go. Now check it out. It seems like I'm impacting the synth. Seems like that this synth is not going straight to the Dolby Atmos plugin. But in fact, this is actually the reverb that's being processed. So if I bypass the reverb and hold shift and click on the output, if we take a look and a listen now, I'll bypass the low pass filter. So you can see that I'm not processing this synth with this EQ at all. We don't even see the signal in the analyzer of the channel EQ, but we did see our synth 3D object represented in the Dolby Atmos plugins preview. And I'm just clicking and dragging on the preview in the Dolby Atmos plugin to change the view so we have a better idea of where the sound is living in the space. So do keep in mind, if you like to process your mix as a whole with EQ or compression or limiting, any tracks assigned to 3D object panner will skip that processing. We can also see how 3D objects can impact routing of your tracks as well. If I select this break lead right here, if we take a look, here's the individual channel strip for this track. And there's the track stack channel strip with all my processing because I'm processing these three synth tracks as if they were a single instrument. If we take a look and a listen, we'll see this track pass along through the processing chain and on the level meter here of the track stack. However, if I right click and assign this track to a 3D object panner, take a look, we no longer see the track stack as our output. Instead, we see the master channel strip because this track is going straight to the Atmos plugin. So if we look in the mixer, Take a look and a listen. This track now completely skips bus nine and the processing for this track stack. Okay, so let's click on the output field for our 3D object. Go to bus and let's set this back to bus nine. But I can't, right? Because I've selected a 3D object panner. So instead let's go to output, select surround. 
And now we can set this back to bus nine. All right, so let's now return to the 3D object panner for our synth stack. I'll keep the Atmos plugin open as well so we can see what's going on as we're panning and working. And I'll reset the spread as well as the back to front and left to right. So we're starting right from the sound being directly in front of us. Just by looking at the 3D object panner, I think a lot of the controls are pretty straightforward, right? Just by grabbing the puck in between the left and right signals, we can move our chosen sound both left to right across the space as well as front to back. Let's take a quick listen. And of course, we can make these adjustments as well using the values at the top of the panning window. So we can adjust back to front as well as left to right. Spread, of course, controls the spread of our stereo 3D objects. And we can adjust the spread either by decreasing it, by reducing the value, or increasing it up to 180 degrees. And we can also grab the left and right handles of our stereo 3D objects, as well as the surround panner, and adjust the spread of this track while also adjusting the placement. So if we take a listen. I actually found by reducing the spread of a stereo 3D object, it's easier to hear where the sound is in the space. So if we take a listen as I pan from left to right and front to back. Of course, we also have elevation control that we can either adjust using the control at the very top of the panner window or by using the visual elevation control at the bottom of the window. If we take a look and a listen once again, A huge benefit of 3D objects over your non-3D object tracks is that you're able to pan your sounds anywhere within the space, not just at different speaker positions, but as close or as far to the listener as you need. And this includes the entire space above as well. Remember, our 3D objects go straight to the Dolby Atmos plugin, and the Dolby Atmos plugin converts our surround project from 7.1.2, only two height channels, to 7.1.4. This allows 3D objects to take full advantage of the space above and anywhere in between. And lastly, we have the size control. The size control changes how your 3D objects are perceived regarding their precise location in the 3D space. So by increasing the size, we more or less diffuse the signal. And you can see that all of these controls are represented visually in the preview of the Dolby Atmos plugin. All right, now that we've walked through the different 3D object panning controls, I wanna play for you a couple of 3D objects that I wrote panning automation for so we can hear these sounds move throughout the space. At the very top of my session here, I have a reverse crash that's going to pan around the listener. And we're gonna see that in the visual display. Right before this last break in chorus, there's a lot of swelling and building leading up to this last section of the song, and I really wanted to emphasize that. 
So I wrote automation for this crash to move from front to back, left to right, and above the listener as well. If we take a listen and a look, I think that sounds pretty cool. If we take a listen again with a different display view, So that reverse symbol is flying around the listener and then ultimately above the listener. On top of that, if we look down below at some of the sound effects, if we solo, we can see sound effect one, two, and three. You can hear all those sound effects alongside the cymbal swell that are floating above and then bouncing from one corner of the room to the other. And if we take a look at the break lead as well, so if we unsolo everything, we take a look right up here. If I press A to show the automation, if we click on this drop down arrow, we can squash up the view. Take a look at that. hear it again. And so our sound is floating above and then behind, and it changes each time. And the third time. And what's so cool about these control for 3D objects, whether it be from front to back, left to right, top to bottom, and the size control, is that all of these controls and automation are exported as metadata for those 3D object tracks. So when someone listens to your Atmos production on their phone or soundbar or on a studio speaker setup, your 3D objects will translate and play back appropriately for that user and their device. All right, in the next video, let's explore multi-channel effects for your Atmos productions. Thanks so much, and I'll see you for more in the next video. Take care.